All right, so just an update to show you where we're at in the project. We just went from the master template that we drew up to a foam core template and now to the core. And here's what the core looks like. It turned out really good. Um, you can see the channels cut in there and you can see the back side recess for the mounting plate. So anyway, this is where we're at. Got to get ready to uh, um, do the layup, so I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, carbon fiber and everything cut out. But I wanted to show you this before uh, we start. You can see here that I've got some, some boards laying inside the grooves, and I've cut these in a way that kind of match up with the, the way the board is. Um, you can see here that these are on an angle. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because when you lay the carbon fiber in some of these, uh, these channels like you've got here, it has a really hard time when the uh, vacuum bag pulls down to get tight into that corner. And so what uh, what this board will do is it'll suck down so that it gets a nice uh, corner here along the, the, uh, the edge of the carbon fiber. Um, things to know is that I made this uh, about three millimeters smaller than it needs to be so that it gives room for the carbon fiber inside the channel there. Also, it's uh, just a tad lower than than the foam core. Um, also, I've got some some blocks here. This one's quite a bit lower because um, we've got the uh, we've got that that mounting plate that goes underneath here. So what I'll do now is I'll take some packaging tape and wrap these in packaging tape, and then I'll wax it so that it doesn't stick to the epoxy. Um, so anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you that little trick. It helps you get all your carbon fiber straight and, and nicely uh, laid in the, the channels there. This is an oven I made uh, a while ago. <clears throat> Basically it's just made out of sheetrock and some old uh, convection oven. Um, just one of those like little toaster ovens. But anyway, it works pretty good. Uh, you can see here, I've got my uh, foam core in there right now and it's cooking. So I'll give that about 20 minutes to heat up. Um, it's got to heat up to around, uh, I think it's 250 degrees until it thermal forms. And then I will pull it out and lay it on top of my mold here so that I can thermal form it. All right, the oven just went off. And so I'm going to take the uh, foam core out, lay it in here. This is a mold I made so that I can thermal form my, my cores. So I'll just take this out, turn it this way, use a board, and just push it on there until it cools off. Try to get it as straight as you can inside whatever mold you're using. Okay, I just got done thermal forming this a little bit. Um, you see that it, it goes back just a little bit. Um, to how it was originally. Um, that that mold that I got down there, that was uh, actually created on top of this other mold, that one right there. And um, anyway, I use it for, for thermal forming. So basically what I'm trying to do here is just get this good enough so that uh, when the vacuum pulls this down against the mold, it doesn't snap these thin edges. So this, uh, this concave right now is about three eighths of an inch. Um, the reality is on the uh, on the mold when it comes out, the uh, the finish board will have a concave about five eighths to three quarters of an inch. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. That's how I do my thermal forming. So there you have it. All right, here is the uh, plug or mold that I'm going to be using for this longboard project. Um, I made this uh, mold back in April of 2010. Uh, I was thinking about building a new mold, but it's really time consuming and I haven't been building many boards lately. So anyway, I just decided to go ahead and use this, uh, this mold. Um, I think I might have some pictures of the uh, build process laying around. Uh, if I can find them, I'll throw them up on the video. If not, let me just really quickly explain to you how I made this thing. Uh, so basically you can see here that there's a base of malamine. Um, once I actually got this part of the mold done, which is, a, which is the black part, I stuck that on top of this malamine. Um, but the base of this black part here is also another piece of malamine. And then what I did was I attached some, some two inch polystyrene 
is the extruded polystyrene that I used. Uh, the blue or pink stuff you can find at, at Home Depot, Lowe's, or Ace, or your local hardware store. And um, I laid that in there. Then I put two templates on each end. So there was a template on this end, a template on that end. I took a hot wire long bow and I cut that out. So it made the, the shape that I wanted. So after I did that, I went back and I put some fiberglass cloth on there, laid it on there, and then um, vacuum bagged it to, to the foam core. And once that was done, I went ahead and took some Bondo and filled it in, sanded it off with probably uh, 100 grit sandpaper. Then I put a really thick layer of gel coat on there then I went back and sanded that down, starting with, I believe, probably around 180 grit, and then worked my way up to 1,000 grit sandpaper. Once I, uh, once I did that, um, I cut it down with just some, some cutting polish, and the cutting polish made it this nice, uh, shiny black. Um, so that's pretty much it. It wasn't too hard to make. It was really time consuming, though. So. If you guys are making uh, long boards and want to make a mold like this, it's going to take you some time, but it's not too hard. Okay, before I get ready to film the uh, the layup, I just wanted to show you that I've got everything set up. I've got my butyl tape laid out and ready to go. I've got my stretch on 200 over here, which is my vacuum bag ready to go. Um, I'm going to be using a, a pump. Uh, you can't see it real good because of the sun, but basically I'm going to be using that because um, it's faster than doing measuring um, in a cup. So the epoxy I'm using is Resin Research 2100 system and I'm using the slow hardener so that I have plenty of time to work with this. It's hot today so um, I probably have a 20 minute pot life. Um, I've got my carbon fiber cut out. If you want to see the layup schedule go to my website theprojectjunkie.com to see that. Basically I'm using um, uh, two layers of uni, two layers of AS4 and then some strips on the death grips or love handles. And um, I've got my my uh, my hose here ready to go. I've got my pill ply, which is this uh, uh, material here, and then I've got my breather ready to go too. So anyway, um, everything's pretty much ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, I got my epoxy ready to go. So I'm gonna probably time lapse this thing. I apologize, I ran out of video on this while I was doing the layup, so I um, wasn't able to show you the rest of the layup, but um, nothing really too complicated. Let me show you what I've got going on. 
um, basically what I did was I, I finished those two layers, put the foam core on it, and then put uh, put the uni, and then um, also the uh, the AS4 on top of that, and then I put uh, those wood stringers in, like you can see here. That's what's right there, and also the blocks on the front, and then I put pill ply on top of that, and um, two layers of breather, and then the stretch lawn 200. And I just bound that to the uh, the butyl tape here, and I ran two hoses. Uh, I like to run two hoses when I can, just because I think it gets a little better suction. You can see here I've got a manifold, and then this line runs to the vacuum pump. Um, on this, uh, I pulled. Um, uh, it, it fluctuated as it got hot. It was pulling about 28 inches of mercury. As it cooled down, um, about 26. So. It's fairly hot in here. I would say it's probably about 85 degrees. So this has been sitting for about uh, five hours now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, the bag off of it and see what it looks like. All right, so I just got done pulling the vacuum bag off of this and noticed that the epoxy hasn't fully cured yet. Um, the manufacturer actually says to, to cure the epoxy for at least six hours at 77 degrees. Um, it's about 80, 85 degrees in here. And so uh, I thought five hours would be enough, but I was wrong. So you can see here that I can bend this uh, epoxy and it's not snapping. This epoxy should be hard and it should snap if I, if I did that. So anyway, I'm not gonna take any chances by pulling this off. I'm gonna leave it on there. And since I'm gonna leave this overnight, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and post cure it. I'm going to use this oven that I made. It's got two IR lamps with a thermostat. Basically, I just took a part a, uh, a convection oven. It's like a $20 Walmart special or 16 bucks. I can't remember. But anyway, um, so it has a thermostat on there. I'm going to go ahead and post cure this at about 140 degrees. All right, so I thought I'd show you this thing in action. Um, basically, uh, this thermostat, if you turn it down, it turns off the lights. And then when it uh, when it, when the uh, temperature on the inside drops to a certain point, it turns the uh, the lights back on. And so I'm just using some IR lights, so infrared lights, and um, I've got it set to about 140 degrees there. So anyway, just wanted to show you that.